Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Supergirl, as well as the latest episode of The Walking Dead. Like always, I'm going to talk about something you want to listen to. You can always look in the description down below. I include a time when I start talking about each of the respective shows. So, for example, if you want to hear what I say about this week's episode of Supergirl, you can see what I had to say about this week's episode of The Walking Dead. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is this week's episode of Supergirl. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode. It's kind of this interesting dynamic in this episode of like John trying to, like the way Kara kind of puts it, plays matchmaker. Because, I mean, it's Valentine's Day and everything, but it's like in the sense of like Kara and Alex are a little distant because it's like she can't work with Alex as Supergirl because obviously she's been kicked out of the DEO. Plus, you know, Alex doesn't know that they're the same person. So she, you know, Alex is more by the books and like, no, you're no longer with the DEO Supergirl, so no, we're not going to work together type of thing. So, you know, he, he takes on this job of trying to find like a missing husband and that ends up, you know, crossing paths with Alex's case, which deals with an alien, which like the whole, them together because they have a symbiotic relationship, the alien and Pamela together is named uh, Men Menagerie. And so... Their paths end up crossing on the case, and it's and then I love like what Kara did the whole like oh yo she you know tapped on that safe and it's like oh wow it just popped open oh wow and John's like oh wow wasn't that a great find it kind of reminded me a little bit of a Detective Conan if you're unfamiliar it's it's a manga anime basically I'm not going to get into it it just it made me think of Detective Conan if you're familiar with Detective, uh, Detective Conan you, you get what I'm talking about but I thought that was so interesting I was like oh that'd be interesting if we saw that going forward it'd just be kind of like a oh no I discovered some evidence. So that just oh I just stumbled across it to make it look I, I thought that would, that'd be so neat sadly it seems like that's an element we won't get anymore just because like just the way well I'll, I'll kind of break it down soon enough but it's like they won't be working together in that same regard so but um yeah it's so interesting in the long run this, this that part of the episode brought up a lot of fascinating things because you know like because this whole situation like ended up like, because even John's like, man, we when we wiped her memory, it had consequences we didn't realize. Like, no one would have thought, like, the ramifications of, of, like, how, like, the tidal wave of, like, changes that this would cause. Like, the fact of the matter is, it made Kara realize something. Like, today, Alex went out above and beyond to protect her. And it's like, and it brought up stuff I'd almost forgotten. It's like, oh, yeah, like, I, I mean, for one, I don't think they'd ever brought it up in the show. But, like, apparently, Alex has been dating again like crazy. And it's like, huh. I mean, it took her a while to get over Maggie, but it still was kind of surprising to me. Because I knew about the whole adopting kid thing, but then I kind of let that slip my mind because she hadn't brought it up in a while. But then Kara's like, yeah, like, Alex just felt like she's kind of stuck because she's looking at John and it's just like, oh, John beyond the DEO, he's got this, you know, PI business, he's, he's an investigator, he's doing good, like, he, he's doing good work. And for her, it's like, eh, things are good on the DEO front, but it's like on her personal life, she feels like everything's kind of falling to the wayside. And now Kara realizes it's like, it's because of me. Because for so long, like, the moment, like, that kryptonite you know, almost killed me. Alex is winning protective mode and everything she did was like pushed her to waste time. I mean, you can make the argument like that's how we got in the predicament we are right now because she wanted to protect Kara being who she is. So it's like protecting Supergirl. I mean, it's just in general, it's like protecting her sister. But now that she doesn't know like, oh, I have to, because, you know, because Kara would always be out there in the field. The fact of the matter is she might be the girl of steel, but she still isn't like unkillable. She can be killed and hurt. So for her, it's like as a sister, it's like I'm stressing and worried every day, you know? I mean, it's kind of similar, like obviously it's in a different relationship aspect, but it's exactly the same thing as like, you know, Iris has to live every day with the whole fact is like she's married to a superhero and like things could happen and it terrifies her. She doesn't, she doesn't really let it show, but it's there, you know? And so it's kind of a similar thing in this regard. So... Now that she doesn't know that Kara and Supergirl are the same person, like, she sees Supergirl get her, it's like, oh, man, that sucks, but it, she doesn't have that connection, and so she's not worried about it 24-7 on the job. Her being there as Kara would just bring that up more, and it's like, I can't be there. You know, it's like, Kara looks at it as a blessing, because it's like, hey, at the very least, now Alex can move on with her life because she's not burdened by this information, you know, and it's like, that's crazy to think about, you know, it's like... She's always, you know, I think, you know, even before the whole thing with, you know, the kryptonite and everything, like, she's always worried about Kara. And I think it took to now for Kara to realize, like, oh, just how much, you know, Alex has put her life on pause because of her, because she's so, because Alex, you know, 
cares about people and protects people, especially those who are important to her. And she's like, you know, Kara, you're the most important person to me. I don't know what I would do if anything ever happened to you. I'd blame myself, you know? So that was kind of like a heartbreaking thing. I've just been like, you know, because Kara wanted any excuse to continue working with her sister. She's like, oh, maybe I found another lead. Maybe I can work with her as Kara. But it's like, no, even that's not going to work. Hence why I'm kind of a little bummed, too, because I'm like, oh, it would have been cool if she could have been like, oh, yeah, I'll help out with DEO cases. Because, I mean, she has an excuse, you know, she's working for Catco and everything. So it's like, oh, I could write, use this as kind of like a piece to be like, oh, yeah. Um. I also love, like, when John and um car showed up because they thought uh he was having an affair which i we never found out maybe because he's the dude who wrote the um, alien amnesty act but i'm curious like maybe he was just meeting someone maybe he was having an affair i have no idea that, i don't think that was ever really brought up well because i don't know like the, maybe car was right about the whole affair situation it's kind of sad anyway but nevertheless i like when they were walking up and, she, and he's like and john's like well what if they're you, you know, couldn't even say it. Cara's like, I mean, I don't know. I can't use my x-ray vision. I guess she didn't want to take the chance. Like, she uses her x-ray vision and ends up seeing it or something like that, maybe. So I thought that was kind of, just kind of like a funny, like, superhero side note. Or just like, I mean, no, I'm not going to use my powers just in case I accidentally do see something happening. It's just, you know. So, um, it's kind of interesting because all while that's happening, there's a Nia situation and you have, you know, Brainy going there to be like, no, 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 let's train and stuff like that. He's like, you know, she, but she's like, I'm grieving. He's like, you know, have you ever thought about, you know, compartmentalizing, putting all your grief into boxes? And she's like, I don't think that's unhealthy. I don't think that's very healthy. He's like, it totally is. Because you got you a little offended because that's what he does. Uh, but the fact is, you know, he's like, yeah, you could go out there and fight. Because obviously he hasn't told her because if he told her, it would probably affect her future and stuff like that. But it's like, yeah, because he knows about her from the future, like what the hero that she will become. And probably knowing like, hey, I helped you become the like this legendary hero that you become. Like I ended up playing a part in helping that. Of course, I'd be super psyched about that, you know? Uh, but I think it's also on some level he likes Nia too. And I love it. Because once again, for him, it's like, I don't, I don't think Nia would, someone as amazing as her would be into me, you know? And, I, you know, I, I kind of get that. So I feel like it's kind of interesting because Brainy, I mean, we don't know what Brainy's really like when it comes to ladies. I mean, he might not have ever been in a relationship in the future. I mean, like for him, work and, you know, also being what he is, kind of being, you know, a uh, uh, hyper-intelligent uh, being like that probably makes dating a little hard and stuff like that. So, but um, you kind of, it's kind of sad in the end because, like, Nia's like, you know, I don't need hearts and chocolate from you, Brainy. I need you to help me train. And you see him kind of a little disheartened because, like, because, you know, Alex is like, well, what do you want? He's like, I want her to be my Valentine. It's like admitting, like, he does like Nia. And so for him, it's like probably hearing that makes him go like, oh, it's like one step forward, two steps back in that regard of like, oh, like Nia was kind of thinking maybe if something was there. But then it was kind of like, oh, I guess for her, it's like, oh, Brainy doesn't feel like that towards me. But it's like, no, Brainy does. But he just, you know, he's awkward and he, do he doesn't understand I was about to say human uh, relationships and stuff like that, especially, well, to be fair, Nia's half human, but still, it's just it's just kind of interesting in my head, like, you know, just, I mean, so for him, it's just something like that problem, you know, brainiacs and stuff like that, you know, because he was actually a bad person before, but it took, like, you know, but he eventually shifted over and became a hero, I mean, it's like, so probably, like, emotions like love and stuff like that probably weren't necessary, you know, him being who he is and everything coming from what he comes from, you know, their whole species and stuff like that. I really don't even know how the Brainiacs, like, species works. Um, I guess there's a, like, I, you know, once again, it comes down to the continuity. I'm assuming this is going by the same, like, continuity as, like, Krypton, where it's like, no, he's from, like, another world. He's, like, an, he's an alien species. He's not, like, some supercomputer. He is, but it's more so, like, oh, I'm a supercomputer because I'm from an alien race of supercomputer being super highly intelligent. You get what I'm trying to say. So... It's just interesting because I feel like Brainiac's backstory in that regard, I feel like, I mean, like amongst televised and movie stuff, I feel like I've never really seen that dove into. But nevertheless, that's going to be going on a tangent. But it's just, I'm, I'm interested to see what goes down with the whole Nia thing, like him taking a step forward and a step back and see, you know, will they ever finally get on the same page. I do like that he was hiding in the closet because uh, it's from uh, Nia's uh, roommate, was it Yvette? And it's just kind of been like, she, like say every song that plays is her jam. And he's like, okay, so, oh, you need me to exam exam analyze this? Okay, I'll come back in a couple of minutes. And he closes the door. I love that. Um, 
So that was interesting. Also in this episode, well, Saito says I'm already talking about um, Nia. It's like, how cool is that outfit? Because this is our first time fully seeing that outfit. I don't know if she made it. It doesn't seem like she made any modifications, modifications, modifications to it. She looks, she looks really nice in it. It's like, holy crap, that's awesome. Uh, like I said, because we'd only seen like it like folded up, I guess. Because I, I thought like I was actually surprised to see it like as full length as it is. I thought it was going to be like. I, I don't know why, for whatever reason, I thought it was kind of a skirt, like, Supergirls, but like, I guess it's because, like, we only saw, like, the blouse, like, you know, chest part of it, so we never saw the bottom, because, like, because it was folded up, apparently. I didn't know it was, like, an actual, like, full-blown suit like that, which I'm like, oh, that's cool. Uh, looks really good on her, and it's like, hey, she's wearing a mask, too, because we don't get enough masked people in this. Like, the only other masked person that's popped up was, um... Jimmy and he had a full blown helmet and everything, so it's just kind of cool to see her like partner up with someone, and it's gonna be cool because that means her and Neo are gonna team up more in the future. It's gonna be like dope because you know, because like there was a whole like uh, menagerie being like, oh, you don't know what it's like to have a partner and stuff like that. Um, the fact of the matter is, I mean, like she did, but now she's kind of on her own. But now it's like, no, she has like Nia there to kind of compensate for no longer having Alex. She even broke that down to Nia and be like, oh man, that sucks. Uh, I guess Nia didn't have any questions about, like, oh, I guess that's just, I mean, it's just the complicated nature of their lives and stuff like that. Like, oh, that she has to wipe her memory to protect you. But it's because, you know, Nia's like, yeah, you know, honor my mom by, you know, because Kara's like, the best thing you can do is honor your, your parents, your mom, what her wishes would be. And it's like, for me to train and, you know, use my powers for good. But it's like, what about my sister? It's like, you can't let that hold you back. You know, because, like, Kara for herself, she hid for so long who she was because of her family. It's like, she could have been out there doing good. I mean, you can make the same argument. Clark did the same thing, too. Once again, depending on what continuity. I mean, I'm assuming, like, he doesn't become super... I feel like most continuity probably doesn't become Superman until, like, he's an adult, you know? Maybe he does a smallville thing of helping out when he's younger, sure, but probably definitely not to the full-blown superhero extent that he does, you know, when he becomes Superman. But, uh, yeah, that was just kind of, it's just a nice dynamic, I feel like they're creating, um, to have someone out there in the field, because, you know, because she used to have the DEO having her back, but now that's not a possibility, so, but at the very least, even when that's all said and done, she still has Alex as her sister, so it's like, I might not be able to work with her, but at the very least, I still have her as my sister, we might not work as, you know, me and her as Supergirl, or me and her as Kara, or me and her in that regard of me being both Kara and Supergirl, but at the very least, I still have her in my life. It's definitely going to get complicated going forward because, you know, the way Haley kind of puts it as like, we can't let Supergirl be the one to kind of fix things. We should have been the ones to handle this because we can't have some alien coming in to kind of save the day. It's like, you know, this is our job. This is our jurisdiction. We have to be the ones. This is the only way to kind of like settle a lot of the dust with a lot of humanity who kind of has, who's scared of this whole situation. So that's, I think that's her justification for like it, for it. So that probably is going to bring even more distance between Alice and Supergirl. Because even Alice is like, Supergirl's not the enemy. It's like, sure, she's not, but it's still the thing of like, like, we have to be the ones as humans to handle this. Um, because Ben's got his son doing this stuff, and his wife's completely okay with it. It's like, man. So that's interesting. Once again, it's like that circling back into the storyline, and that Kara uh, from uh, the Red Daughter situation. Once again, it's like, that's like tiptoes into the storyline and it's not maybe like like I, I was assuming like the second half of the season would be entirely about that turns out that to be the case I guess that's just going to be a smaller part of the season but once again it seems like the stories are bleeding together just because of those rage pills uh, in the last episode so it sounds like we're definitely going to see those stories like heavily impact one another one another in some shape or form so it's ever going to be interesting but um kind of tying that all in well it's like now like you know the um uh, Children of Liberty kind of have more of a reputation. It's like, yeah, we killed this alien, and it was actually Ben's son who did it too, which is kind of crazy that you would do that. But it's like, because of his radicalism, he's willing to make his child do it too. And, but I mean, his son is just as radical as him. It's like, I want to do more for the cause and everything. He's wearing a mask and everything, and it's just like, jeez. What also surprised me was, like, the president being like, oh, I want this taken care of with the whole... I was, assume, like, legitimately, in a retrospect, it's like, it kind of makes sense that would be the case. But I thought he was... I thought he was legitimately was like, we're going to kill him. We're going to take... I was like, wait, what? Really? But it's because he doesn't want... Ben, the longer Ben's in jail, the more publicity he gets. So it's like, if he's out and about, yeah, he can say what he wants. He'll get a following and stuff like that, sure. But it will be out of the news. It won't be as 
big of a deal. It's still be a big deal, but not as big. So I guess that's his justification for it. Because when he was like, okay, let's get him released and everything. I was like, what the hell are you doing? I, I doubt it's him. Not unless we see him being like, oh no, we're going to join with the Children of Liberty. If he does, that's going to be crazy. But it's also something Haley talked about because it's like, when it comes to like popularity and stuff like that, Ben is better in a better position than even the president is right now. Just because a lot more people are supporting him and his beliefs and everything. So, but uh, kind of getting to it, that all ties into uh, Lena in this episode. Lena is getting, Colonel Haley comes to visit her and is like, hey, so what we're going to do is we're going to give you a government contract. We know about you trying to basically, you know, give people human super abilities and stuff like that. I'm like, how the hell do you know that? Like, I guess the government keeps tabs on everybody, or maybe she kind she probably reached out to the government, to the president, somebody, like, whatever it is. It's like, because she didn't seem that shocked that they knew. It's like, shouldn't you be worried that they know? Because I'm like, I thought that was like a well-kept secret. I felt like the only person who knew that was like, um, is it Evie and, um, is it Eve? No, it's Eve, right? Not Evie. Eve and, um, Jimmy. Like, I felt like that was kind of like a well-kept secret, but I guess not. And now they want to, you know, it's like, oh, like, we can boost our military. It's like, oh, look at all this terrible stuff happening. We can help people now uh, if we, if you can basically give people powers. Obviously, it leads to an interesting conversation with Jimmy where Jimmy was like, no, I, I know this whole thing of, like, you wanted to, you know, give powers to people. Like, it's a morally gray situation, but the fact of the matter is I support you in that. I can't support you in giving the military this type of power. And it's like, Lena, it, it, you know, it breaks up with Jimmy for it because it's like, it's a different belief they have on this situation. And it's like, you can understand both sides of things. Because you understand where Lena's coming from. Because for her, it's like, they didn't justify the means. It's like, yeah, you could be worried about, like, hey, they might abuse it. But why worry about might? When the fact of the matter is, all this alien problems right now is a short thing. And it's like, I want to make sure everyone is, you know, prepared for what's to come. And like, even if it is the situation of the government having the power, like at the very least, if I perfect it, then eventually I'll be able to protect, you know, they'll be able to protect more people. So for her, it's like, it's a numbers game of like protecting more lives. But the fact of the matter is, like Jimmy said, and that's kind of the other side of things. It's like, but you don't know what's going to happen beyond that. It's like, you know, the fact of the matter is power corrupts. But absolute power corrupts absolutely. That's the whole thing, and there's a reason for that. And I'm, I'm sure that might come up in you know in the grand scheme of things and all of this. But the fact you know, like the fact is, like it can be misused. Like power gets abused all the time. No one's above abusing power, you know, in that regard. So it's like eventually you'll have people just as powerful as literally Supergirl probably floating around and the last thing you want is you know people who you know because we don't know what that power might do to people like power has a tendency to corrupt people's minds and stuff like that to be fair you know because you you might be thinking you're creating a Supergirl when in actuality you're creating another rain you know uh you know or geez I, you know an even worse comparison you could be creating the next doomsday that's something you have to think about. So, I don't know. It's like it's like I lean more towards Jimmy's opinion just because it's like, uh, you know, like I mean, because especially because like everyone has their own agenda. It's not like everyone's going to be doing things for the greater good of other people. It's like I mean, they will in general, but it's like I mean, even use you know, like you know, within the show, it's like use the government for example. Like the U.S. is going to do what's best for them, not necessarily what's best for the rest of the world. At least Supergirl's got, like, the entire Earth is under, like, no, I'm going to protect everyone, you know? Like, this world is under my protection type of thing, where it's like, you know, that might not be a sentiment everyone shares, you know? And then it's going to turn into a, like, oh, they got powers, where then someone else is going to go off and try and recreate what she's doing and give powers out to everybody, and then, like, you're going to have that situation of, like, oh, man, here are bad guys with powers. And there's also the conversation from before of, like, who are you to determine who gets powers and who don't? You know, because it's like, oh, we won't give it to bad people, but it's like, you know, that's a very subjective, you know, I mean, it's not a very subjective thing. It's a clear thing, but then that's going to cause a problem because it's like, oh, I'm not good enough to get superpowers. You know, that's the thing. So it's kind of an interesting discussion, which Lena decides at the end, like, oh, no, I'm going to go through with it regardless. I'm interested to see what happens because you know that's going to blow up in her face in some shape or form. Because you know what's also interesting to me? It kind of, and I'm, she probably would take offense to it, kind of reminds me of a Lillian situation. That seems like something her mom would do. You know, just, because, like, I, and I think maybe that's the parallel that they're potentially going to create. It's like, 
you doing this is because you're trying to buff up humans and it's going to look like a very anti-alien stance that you have, which even Lena's kind of made it seem like, once again, it's like she's more of a middle of the road person, but it's just so interesting that it does seem like she is siding one way. Like, she was pro-alien in certain regards, but now she's like pro-human in others. Like, for her, it's just like she wants to keep the peace and she thinks this will keep the peace. It's like, no, there's going to be people who abuse this are like, Oh, you step out of line, we'll deal with you. It's like, because even Supergirl who saves the day will probably be put in place being like, oh, you think you can do whatever you want to? No, we're here to kind of stop you. You're not necessary. We don't need no aliens. We are humans. You know, once again, like, go back to the conversation I just had. Could, you know, corrupt them, like mess with their minds or something like that. I guess it's the whole point of perfecting it and everything like that. But still. The whole thing's just a very fascinating situation. Like I said, I'm sure it's going to blow up in her face. I'm just not sure how exactly, but I know it will. So, and since I am referencing, I was referencing Lily, and we haven't seen her for a while. So I'm curious to see, you know, is she watching? Is she going to be watching? It, I I want them to include Lily, and so like she'll be like, oh, I'm so proud of you, and she, you know, Lena will probably be like, I'm not doing this for you, and that turns into a whole thing. So now another interesting thing about this, obviously, with Ben getting released, we have. Uh, Manchester sending Pamela a letter, so it's like, oh, okay, for him, it's like, she might have done some bad stuff, but it's like, hey, she's probably not going to like this, do we? I mean, she was a thief and stuff like that, so she probably knows how to get out of the pla out of places, so he's probably looking to team up. We also see that that alien isn't completely dead, you know, it's still alive in her, so... I was like, oh, man, that's kind of crazy. You just got the powers and everything. And it's, even for her, I was like, oh, I enjoy the powers. It's the most powerful I've ever felt. Why would I give this up? So I was like, oh, you lost it. But it's like, no, it's still there waiting to kind of bubble back to the surface. I do like, you know, you can't literally help but make the comparison because it's like she says symbiote and she's like, we are menagerie. And it's like, I won't say what obviously you can make the comparison to. But like, I'm very interested to see where all of this takes us going forward. And now moving on to this week's episode of The Walking Dead. A very interesting episode. I do kind of like the parallels that they kind of created in this episode. Because obviously we're talking about like the different lives. Like you're comparing Henry's life to Lydia's life. Lydia's life turned out to be kind of pretty shitty. And I love and it kind of like how they play with you throughout the entire story. Because it's not just her like telling that just to kind of make you sympathetic. Because when Daryl comes to her later on, it was kind of like, wait, that seems a little weird. Because it's like she, like the way her dad was kind of set up in the story. It's kind of like he seems like an asshole, but he's there coddling her she's even rubbing a tattoo of him her name on his arm I was like wait that doesn't make any sense I was like wait I thought your mom had a tattoo does he have it too I'm like and then your mom seemed like she snapped out of nowhere and killed some dude I'm like whoa 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 something's not adding up here because it's interesting because like you know compare that to like Carol like Carol you know is the badass that she is but she's always been kind to people especially when it comes to kids and you know I think it's just from the fact that she was a mother lost her daughter I mean I think I think even without all that she would have been who she is now but maybe I don't know that's why she's very protective, because she lost her own little girl. So when it comes to, you know, Henry, she's going to be super protective. Just not just him, but like all the people they've lost. Remember, there were the uh, two sisters, uh, the, the little girls, uh, her and Tyrese lost. They were close to just because this world had warped their minds. So it's kind of interesting when you kind of take that and kind of apply it to this whole situation with Lydia and her mom. It's actually super messed up in the long run because, because like, for one, she is trying to escape, like, the whole, like, oh, Daryl's trying to give her medication, trying to give her water, and she's trying to snatch at it, but he sees the marks on her arm, and he's like, he recognizes it because he's like, oh, those are marks from a switch or something. It's like, yeah, whoever it was abused you, but you were like, you said your dad died, so was that BS? But it's like, so it's like, it's from her mom that was beating her. Like I said, it's just interesting in comparison because it's like, for her, she's lived this entire life being like, no, 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 no. You can't live in like places like this, you know, Hilltop. It's like, they will crumble eventually. Walls don't last forever. Like, this is the dead's world and we have to live in it. But the fact is that, you know, you have Henry being like, that's not the case. The fact of the matter is, you know, walking around wearing dead people's skin is weird. But she's like, uh, is messed up. And the fact is, she's like, but you living behind these walls thinking that they'll keep you safe and that it won't crumble is what's messed up, you know? So it's just kind of like these different point of views. Like, it's one's a very skewed point of view of just kind of being like, the world may never go back to the way it was. No, not may. Isn't going back to the way it was. So we've adapted to it, and this is the way it is. Like I said, this is the dead's world, not ours. But, you know, Henry and the others, like, obviously, like, these groups all believe in, like, no, we can rebuild society. It's so but and steady, but we will get there eventually, you know, that we can rebuild it all, kind of shape it into, make this world a better world, you know? 
that's kind of the mentality that everyone has. But then Henry starts bringing up the kingdom and stuff. So Daryl came in and was like, ah, get the hell out. Because it's like, yeah, you're letting a lot of information slip. It's like if she ended up getting away and something happened to the kingdom because of you, you'd never forgive yourself. And that's why Daryl kind of stepped in when he did. It's like, what the hell are you doing talking to her? And it's like, wait, how'd you? Yeah, I've been hearing it. Not only me, other people have been taking shifts listening. And he's like, you are, she's right, you are an asshole. Um, but it's kind of, like I said, it's interesting the parallels between them because it's like Carol had her darker side for a while. Like it's just like her way of surviving and everything. So she was a little cutthroat. But I think because she still had her humanity in comparison to Lydia's mom, who seems like because the way the story was told, it kind of made me go. So does that mean like her mom was abusive the entire time? I do kind of like that. It kind of flipped that on its head because it's like the opposite like I said, your story is actually, because it makes it go like, oh, like, you think, like, her story is very similar to Carol's, like, oh, she's a very meek woman, and then she gained, you know, the situation she put in kind of allowed her to find her inner strength. It's like, no, it seems like she was an asshole from the very beginning, especially because when Lydia kind of pieces it together, because she kind of breaks down because she's like, wait a minute, what? She looks outside, she sees this group, and it's like all that they've built, and it's like, I mean, Hilltop's been there, like, longer than six years, but, like, the state it's in now has been uh, a developing thing for the past six years. Uh, but the fact is, it's like all that they built, the fact of the matter is hearing a baby cry, like it made you like, whoa, th something like this shouldn't be possible. My mom said it wasn't possible. The fact is, she was digging up worms and, you know, eating them because for her, it was like hunger is a, what was it, like a blessing or something like that. It's like, I think for what she, my understanding of it, and I'm, I'm only interpreting this, because she was like, Henry, like, if you don't understand, it's something you, I, I, I can't explain it to you because you still won't understand. I'm taking it as, like, it's a luxury to be hungry. It's just like, that's the only thing you have to worry about. Like, the fact is that, that you know, it's a blessing in a sense of, like, it's, I don't know, it's, it's hard to really say. It's like, I, I think I could kind of get to that mentality of why you would say that, of, like, I guess because it's like, if you're always fighting for, for your hunger, like, the fact is it keeps you on your toes, it keeps you strong, essentially, because that's the whole mentality they have, that if you're weak, the weak get killed, the strong survive, because in her mind, it's like, no, my dad was weak, that's why he died, he died because of me, and like, you know, but then Daryl was kind of like, no, that wasn't your fault, you were a kid, and what was your dad supposed to do, let you get bitten, you know, it's like, no, he wanted to protect you, but long, going back to it, it's like, no, she realizes, like, my mom's lied to me my entire life. Like, ever since I was a little girl, ever since then, she's been telling me each and every day how it was my own dad's fault. That was my fault that he ended up dying. He died trying to protect me, which he kind of did, but it wasn't like a walker that killed him. It was her own mom because it's like, because he stood against her and, like, she, she like, the whole him being like, oh, I'm a, I can do what I want now. That was her when she cut her hair and everything. It's like, like I said, that was such a twist I thought was kind of interesting because I was like, because like I said, things just didn't line up, but now it kind of makes sense because her, ever since she was, like, her memories of stuff was kind of a little hazy because she was like, what, five at the time? It's been many, many years, and it's like your mom also on top, top of all that being, like, warping your perspective on it, making you go, like, it's all your fault that your dad died even though she's the one. But you can make the argument, her mom probably didn't mean that, though, because it's like because he wanted to try and protect you coddle you you know he's going to try and take you from me so i killed him he's like you're, you're not going to take you know and that's what it seems like in the long run like obviously i'm skipping around here and stuff like that but obviously she showed up later on because even lydia was like mom's not coming for me like the group once you left behind they move on they forget you even exist the fact of the matter is that they don't go with after large groups unless they absolutely have to but her mom's showing up here and like i want my daughter so it's like for me I don't think it's love. I think it's simple possession because it's like, you're my property. I'm going to forge you into a weapon that can survive that when my time is up, you will be hard enough to like survive everything, you know, kind of, it seems like her mom wanted to cut out that humanity side of her. And that's what I'm talking about. Like Carol did some stuff, like obviously like the whole prison thing when people, they thought people were infected, Carol killed and burned people's bodies, that whole situation. And, you know, when they first start, showed up in Alexandria, she put up the front and everything. But Carol has this, you know, her humanity kicked in. Like, and even to the point that she stopped wanting to kill people. Like, that whole thing with Morgan. Like, that shifted everything for her. And so, it shows you that her humanity, maybe, maybe you can make the argument it disappeared for a while. But I think in the end, like, whether it did or not, it came back. With Lydia's mom, Alpha... I don't think it did, and it's just kind of, it, I think it shows you, because it's interesting, because obviously, like, Henry 
and Lydia are about the same age, and then their like family dynamics are very different. I mean, Henry, you know, he lost his mom and a dad, but he got them. He got another mom and dad, being Ezekiel and Carol. And it's like, he got a loving family. I mean, you're fair, he had a loving family to begin with his dad and his brother, but the fact of the matter is, look at this, it's like, you see kind of like the opposite side of things of like, because even Daryl, because even Henry's like, how could a mom do that, tell a child it's their fault their parent died? And Daryl's like, just some people are not meant to be parents, and like, that is one prime example of it. But I'm sure, uh, like, the way Daryl kind of felt sympathetic towards her, like, recognizing the switches and stuff like this, because he, he knew, you know, from, because even Henry was like, did someone ever beat you? The fact is that he was able to recognize, like, you know, what was up with Lydia, that he would, you know, recognize the marks on her arm because he probably him and um, his brother knew those marks all too well, you know. But even then, it's kind of interesting because I think Lydia legitimately goes, I don't want to go. I want to actually stay here. Like, even if her mom's there, probably, I don't know, in the end, she might decide to go just because she wants to protect Henry as well as all these people. It's like, these are good people here. I can't. We got to just leave them alone, but her mom probably won't see it that way. It's like, no, this group, you know, she might, I mean, hell, I get the feeling like if Lydia went back with them, they would kill Lydia because it's like, no, 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 you're weak. I mean, plus they don't want to give her up anyway because it's like she knows where the kingdom is and stuff like that. And maybe she might change her mind, you know, just to kind of be reunited, be back with the group and everything. But now that she's come to the realization, because it's like, I always saw that darkness in my mom, but I let her get inside of my head and just kind of like, warp my mind of what went down that night and everything like that because not only did she kill one person she killed two people she's like all these people are panicking we're going to leave them to die kind of like you know it seemed like she was more like i don't know she's so set in her own path of like how things should be and it's like you didn't even really care about what was going to happen to your daughter it seems like but i guess the argument like all the stuff in uh, her head where it's kind of like her dad being like, don't tell me I don't love our daughter. I'm sure that was actually her saying that, you know, so. So for her, it's probably a justification of like, no matter what, everything I do, I do for you. Just like they're trying to create a future for the children. Like, that's what she's trying to do. Like, she's trying to get her child, uh, Lydia, prepared to kind of pass on the torch and just keep people, you know, uh, any future generations, I guess, living like this, being amongst, amongst the whispers to like, lead humanity in this time of, you know, adapting to the situation, you know? Legitimately, that's in the back of my mind, though. Like, I think when it's all said and done, I think when Lydia, if whatever the circumstances may be, when she tries to go back to kind of calm her mom down or something, like, her mom is going to kill her. And I just, I have that feeling. She's willing to kill their dad. I get the feeling like she's willing to kill Lydia, which would suck because you can definitely tell Henry cares about her. She actually cares about Henry, too, because it's just like, please don't Lady, could you sleep in here with me tonight? And they actually held hands and everything. Like, her perspective has really changed. It's not even her, like, faking it anymore. Because she was just, because she was up front being like, your friends, all didn't look. They might, they most likely dead. Like, because my mom and the group would have no reason to keep them alive, you know? But maybe it's like, they will be kept alive just for the purposes of, like, oh, we'll use them as leverage to get my daughter back. I figure she didn't kill Alden and Luke. Maybe tortured him or something like that. We don't know. We'll have to kind of wait uh, and see what happens going forward in that regard. This episode also said an interesting thing I'd never really thought about. And that was about Carol. Because Ezekiel had asked like, why she had kept her hair short. That was because of her abusive husband. It was like, oh, jeez. And like, because I, I think I took note of it like after the time skip of it, like, uh, like her hair's growing out and stuff like that. But it never clicked in my head to be like... Right, Carol's never had really long hair. Like, I think there's points in the series where she let it grow out a bit more, but not to the extent that it is right now. And I'm like, huh, now you have more context of it being like, oh, she kept it short because of her husband. And the fact is, all these years she kept it short, and now she's letting it grow back out. kind of shows you where her and Ezekiel stands, that she feels comfortable to be over. Like, you know, that she let, like, she kind of finally... Somewhere in her heart, she finally let go of, like, all of that. I think, to some level, that was maybe subconsciously, um, you know, a block in her head of, like... What I mean is, like, it being this block in her head that she couldn't just really shake until now with everything with Ezekiel, with Henry. She's able to kind of just, you know, be a mother again and be in love and be happy and not have to be scared, you know? So, I don't know. It was just kind of an interesting yet sad and messed up thing. Uh, but I did like Henry being like, I'm glad that you're my mom's friend, you know, so. Because even he realized that, you know, it's like, for him, it's like, you seem like you're the type, like, Daryl seems like he's kind of like, because even um, Lydia was like, no, you're like, 
these people here are too soft, but you, you're, you're like us, you're, you're kind of, you're hard on the inside of, like, you know, you're strong, but, you know, Daryl's kind of like, don't act like you know me, and I think Henry kind of realizes, like, you seem like that on the outside, but you're actually a very caring person, like, that's always been his thing, like, Daryl is kind of a lot more of a, um, hard on his sleeves type of dude than you would think he is, I mean, that's why he didn't outright kill Lydia, because he's just, he's not the cold-blood person to do it, Maybe, like I said, maybe it's just every day, like, I feel like he's always been like that, but maybe in between the time skip after losing Rick that something changed. I mean, it might have to do with the events in that six-year period that kind of led him to being that, but still, who knows? Another interesting side of this thing is Magnus and the others. Like, Magnus was kind of like, no, 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 we're going to stay here. And they're like, no, Lucas' family and everything like that. We're going to do whatever we can to find him. Once again, I bring it up, like, the whole aspect of, like, man, it's so nerve-wracking because, like, uh, they were looking for Alden and um, Luke earlier, but they were like, okay, are those dead or are those people in disguise? Watch the hands, and it's like, okay, normal, the typical... Uh, Walker, walk. Okay, you're Walker. It's like, okay, thank goodness. Like I said, it's such interesting because like you're always on edge because you're like, is is that a human? Is that a Walker? I don't know. And it's so good. Uh, but the others didn't want to wait and they decided to go out. But then it's kind of like it took a while. It took them a while, but they had to finally realize it's like, yeah, it's a little too dangerous to be out here. Interestingly enough, I didn't know it until they brought it up. But the, the two youngest are, are siblings. I had no idea. She was like, I'm gonna stay out here with my sister. I was like, oh. Had that come up before? I don't think. Maybe it had, and I just I didn't remember it or I missed it. I didn't had no idea there were siblings. That's crazy, because it is kind of because I think it's that mentality of they're alone. They're so used to kind of doing things on their own that you know, kind of like yes, you're you don't agree with the way someone else operates, so you're going to just go your own way. So of course you're not really you know going to follow other people's orders because it's also this is another person in your group that you care about it's like you made it here together like if you leave one person behind that's just despicable especially it's because it's like we only made it this far because we had each other you know so i was worried when the two stay behind because i'm like oh man those must those are the walkers walking to you but then it turns out like oh tara had guards like guards spotted you the moment you left and everything and it's like oh okay so i was like no 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 those are definitely walkers weren't they and the way the episode is it's like oh yeah they were definitely walkers um, luckily Tara and the others got to him beforehand because they probably would have just gotten kidnapped like Luke and Alden, or at the very least they were probably just going to wait to follow them back anyway, so that's probably how that was going to work out, so. Things are definitely getting interesting. Um, I did forget to talk about where Tara was kind of like, yeah, okay, so if when you don't agree with a decision I made, rather than just going off and doing your own thing, how about you come talk to me first, because she's like, I don't think I'm, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing in this situation, but I don't want to lose any more people. And that includes you guys, because there are people now, and it's like, so, you know, you don't have that mentality of you're alone, like, we got you, you're part of it. And just, and you kind of have Henry doing the same thing for Lydia, being like, can she stay? And even Daryl's kind of like, we'll, we'll see, and it's like, because she wasn't one directly involved, because she was a girl that was kind of mixed up in all of this stuff. I mean, to be fair... Who got second chances? The sanctuary people did. They're plenty. You know, look at Alden. Alden's from the sanctuary. But just because you're from the sanctuary doesn't mean that you believed in everything that Negan did, you know? So there's people from the sanctuary that stayed in everything. So so I think it's going to be kind of an interesting thing to see. Um, I think this is going to be even crazier than the sanctuary because I don't think you're going to be able to kind of shift as many people's minds as you might have been able to with the sanctuary because I think they're so rooted in the way they've lived a life that they... There's no coming back for them, but Lydia, I think she was in a state where she was malleable enough, especially when the truth came out, like, wow, my mom is a piece of shit, and she lied to me and manipulated me, trying to basically, essentially tarnishing the, the, my father's name, um, even kind of blaming, making me blame myself for all these years that I'm the reason why he died, it's all my fault. Once again, it's all for her sick, twisted purpose of toughening her up and everything, so... Crazy episode. I'm very interested to see where all of this takes us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So, the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good.